So I just want to give you some of my thoughts on actually using the Q DSLR dashboard app with my Canon 5D Mark III. I'm connecting it directly via a cable to my Android phone. But to do this, you need the um, USB cable that comes with your camera, but then also you need one of these, which is an OTG cable. And you can pick these up on Amazon for three to five pounds. So I can simply plug the OTG cable into my phone and the other end has a USB type A port on it. So I can plug that into the USB cable of my camera, switch on the camera, load the app, and then it should find the camera. Um, and then I can basically control the camera using the app. Uh, there are a few issues with this um, and it's not completely smooth as I found out when I was testing it out in the field. The first thing I found was that of course as soon as the uh, phone goes to sleep, which it does quite quickly, the app would also lock out and I would have to restart the app and sometimes I would have to re-plug in the camera for it to actually realise that it was connected. But of course then I found a setting inside the app which allows you to leave the screen on all the time. But again that's not really ideal because obviously that is then draining the battery of your phone. Um, and also it just means that the app is permanently connected which means of course you can't use the phone for anything else. Also, the other problem is, of course, that the cable is constantly connected to the camera and to the phone, so you have to just basically sit with the phone and the camera for the entire length of the time lapse, which potentially, if you're doing a day to night, could be anything from two to three to four hours. So there's obviously battery drain issues there, potentially. For quite a long time, I was struggling to get the auto holy grail function to work because the app needs to have a photograph from the camera and eventually I figured out what the problem was you have to tell the camera to take both raw and JPEGs and you have to tell the camera to take the raw and JPEGs on the same card I had it set to store JPEGs on one card and raws on the other and for some reason that meant that the app was not able to download the JPEGs which meant I couldn't then switch on the auto holy grail function. Eventually, through a process of trial and error, I managed to figure this out. And then of course, once the app loads in the JPEG, it uses the luminance data from that photograph to then start to control the camera automatically and then automatically ramp the shutter speed and the ISO for you as it gets dark for a sunset or as it gets light for a sunrise and time lapse. So with, with all those um, things set up and working I did actually manage to capture I think about two and a half hours of time lapse using the app. I think the biggest problem really is that the app obviously has to be connected all the time to the phone. If there's a problem with the phone or the connection between the camera and the app goes down the the, the functions then stop working um, and I found this a few times that the phone just kind of timed out or the camera stopped talking to the phone and of course then you start to lose the functionality of this auto time lapse or this auto holy grail function because it's not obviously then checking the luminance of the individual photographs and I also found that the actual intervalometer on the app was a little bit flaky too so um, having read around online it seems that most people tend to use a separate intervalometer to control um, the time lapse function and then they use the app to read the luminance data to create these auto holy grails but nevertheless I was able to use the app and the phone to create a two and a half hour time lapse which I was reasonably pleased with and having processed all the images through RT time-lapse. I got a time-lapse of a sunset through to dark.